If I had to describe Zenless Zone 0 in one word, that would be satisfying. And this is not just because they repeated that word so many times during the live stream that it entered my head. The new Poyoverse game has a very distinguished look compared to its predecessors, but it's built on the same core idea. Production quality and overall aesthetic took precedence over everything else, and first and foremost, the game has to feel good. In Zenless, they achieved this by pushing an artistic identity that doesn't feel like anything they've done before. The first thing that sets the tone is the music. Oyuverse's latest music catalog includes quite a few genres. EDM, hip-hop, electronic jazz, and all of them share some characteristics. Percussions are a constant, and the rhythm is almost always fast. It's the kind of music you could dance to, but despite that it remains very coherent throughout its sequences. This is true even for the battle music, where the rhythm naturally gets faster, but the sound schemes never quite feel uncontrolled. This allows the music to always feel enjoyable, while not diminishing its pumping effect. In particular, the electric sounds make the whole catalogue feel vibrant and modern, and these characteristics are immediately matched by the story and the visuals. This becomes clear right from the login screen, which shows us a television in the middle of a room full of contemporary objects. A pretty basic preview, but an effective and appropriate one nonetheless. Many of the things you can see in ZZZ won't differ too much from what you can find in real life. The main city of the game can easily be mistaken for a simplified representation of a modern metropolis like Tokyo, for example. The clothes the characters wear are stylish, even by current day standards. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't mind putting that jacket on for a night out. This realism is however promptly disrupted by the main enemy of Zenless Zone Zero, the Hollows. Truth be told, this game's setting is not meant to reference modern times. Rather, we are in a futuristic age where civilization has been set back by a supernatural phenomenon. The city I briefly talked to you about is actually the last standing human settlement, and the cause is the Hollows. Hollows are big black spheres that cover large areas and within the range create alternate dimensions. Expectedly, the insides of these hollows are very dangerous, with the main peril being monsters, called ethereals. The ethereals are ominous and mysterious beings that mean certain death for anybody that is unprepared to their assaults. Their design is definitely meant to be scary, and what jumps out is the black sphere they have, which clearly connects to the hollow sphere. The Black Sphere is not an uncommon element in sci-fi, in particular, the Hollows remind me of the Black Sphere from Akira. Not many people are brave enough and equipped well enough to enter the Hollows, but among them you will find the main cast of the game. I have to admit, ZZZ is one of the most diverse rosters I've ever seen in a gacha game in terms of character design, to the point that some of the characters look like they're from a completely different game compared to the others. From a lore standpoint, this is justified by the fact there is only one livable city on Earth, which by the way is called New Eridu, so all of the people kind of have to live there. Main characters wise, the game divides them by groups, each of them having identity identifiable characteristics. Some of these are quite basic, for example the guards look like policemen or the housekeepers look like maids, but others are more subtle, like it is for the cunning hairs. These people are basically mercenaries, which means they're more self-centered. This is reflected by their clothing that doesn't follow any conformity rule, but rather just fits their unique personal style. My favorite of mine here is Billy Kid, an extravagant looking cyborg that kinda reminds me of Ban from Seven Deadly Saints, but just in cyborg version. But I'm sure many other people are interested in Nicole, for reasons. Among these, the main character we can pick at the start is a proxy, and naturally it can either be male or female looking depending on our preference. Their designs are pretty generic and foolproof, which is kind of needed because as the main characters of the story they have to fit every taste. The proxies have the role to lead every group into the hollows, so the lower excuse to put every playable character at our command, if you pull them, that is. 
In this regard, Hoyoverse will supply you with plenty of free pulls at the start, so you can get a lot of characters right off the bat. Specifically, you can get 30 pulls through login bonuses, 100 in total through events, and 80 Bupon pulls as well. I'll also remind you that Zenless Zone Zero drops on the 4th of July, and this video has been sponsored by them, so I'm thankful for this opportunity. Now I want to talk about story progression a bit. A new feature in this game, compared to past Hoyoverse games, is that you can skip through the dialogue. I found it pretty funny when they announced it in the stream, because they said it right at the start, almost like saying, we we know you want this thing, so here you go. At a glance, this might seem like a red flag for the overall quality of the story and how confident Hoyoverse is in it, but I don't think that's what's going on here. In my opinion, they just want to make the game as accessible as possible, trying not to force players to read through the written story in order to be able to enjoy the rest of the experience. This is a step forward compared to their other titles, where endless dialogues have always been a source of complaint by the players. However, I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't think that the story itself isn't pretty cool as well. I'm not gonna make any spoilers, but what jumps out is the presentation. A lot of the dialogues are depicted by very well-crafted 2D scenes, which kind of give Zenless Zone Zero the appeal of a high-quality comic. There is so much care put in all of them that it makes me believe that while they're giving you the opportunity to skip them, they definitely don't want you to. Lastly, I will talk about the gameplay and the combat, which to me is the most important aspect. When it comes to the fighting specifically, ZZZ is an action game first with some RPG elements on top. The core premise behind the action ties to the keyword I mentioned at the start of the video, satisfying. The game producer Jen Yu Lee said that in order to achieve this aspect, they took a lot of inspiration from the Street Fighter series. Not in the sense that characters have particularly complex combos, but rather a big focus has been placed on characters having the right amount of input feedback on their actions. Actions. This feedback is characterized by the sound and visual effects that are generated after every move. Simply put, it's what traces the difference between Zealous Zone Zero's combat feeling like a battle mashing experience and it feeling like a rhythmic battle. Specifically, the impact frames feel rewarding. For example, the game has a special parry ability that can activate if you switch certain characters in right at the time the opponent is about to hit you. If you manage to pull it off, this is what will happen. <laughs> For each special parry, the crisp sound effect, the visual spark, and the knockback the character is receiving really make the weight of the hit noticeable. There is nothing innovative here, but the whole aesthetic around it is making it feel great nonetheless. The same aspect applies to chain attacks, which can be activated by switching to another character while the opponent is dazed. <laughs> In addition to all of this, the great looking ultimate moves and all the colors mixing on the field make Zealous Zone Zero a great visual experience even during the combat. Having said this, these things are not meant to hide a technically poor gameplay. To use their own words, they wanted to create an experience that could feel enjoyable for both the casual players and the ones that are looking for a higher skill ceiling challenge. The first is pursued through the things I mentioned before, while the second is achieved through some nifty gameplay touches. In particular, the game offers two ways to get away from enemy attacks. The first are the special parry and dodges I already talked about, and while they look cool, they have a restriction. They have a gauge that determines how many times you can use them, and it consumes very fast. Realistically, it's not something you can spam. The second is the dodge button, which if used at the right time, it will generate a perfect dodge. This one has a cooldown as well, but only if you can manage to pull off the perfect dodge. Perfect dodges don't count for the cooldown, which means that as long as you can dodge at the right time, you can keep your combo up indefinitely while still having all of your defensive options available. It's an offensive-oriented approach that is meant to reward players that take risks and don't play conservatively. This fast-paced style is fitting, because with the sound effects being as good as they are, and with the electric music in the background being so pumping, it really makes it feel like an epic battle overall. As a whole, Wild Zealous Zone Zero is definitely targeting a new niche compared to something like Genshin Impact, for example. It maintains the same level of quality Hoyovers has teached us to expect from them. As they take new directions, Hoyovers proves to be ambitious, and that's the one trait a game company needs to have. 